Okay, okay, your little piano pussies, you stop crying now. <laughs> so weak. I know it's difficult, but it's not impossible and you can do it. So let's break it down in this video. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Monique, I'm a classical pianist. And after today's video, you will finally master all the technical challenges. Okay, okay, you won't. I'm not a wizard, sorry. <laughs> But you will have the tools to understand this part better and hopefully after many many hours of correct practicing you will also be able to play this part in full speed. <laughs> now, before we get into the video, here's a little concert announcement, a little big one. I'm going to play my New Year's concert in the Gewandhaus in Leipzig on the 13th of January 2024. I'm so looking forward to it. It's a really, really beautiful concert hall. It's one of the most prestigious concert halls in Germany. For everyone who's living in Leipzig or around Leipzig, you'll find the tickets and information in the links in the description box. Okay, now let's start the video. Everything starts with a good fingering. Stop thinking weird, you weirdos. Okay, back to the fingering. I know every hand is different and every hand is very individual, but in the end, the anatomical structure of each hand is the same. Meaning each finger has different functions on your hand and these functions are going to be the same on my hand as on your hand. So there's no excuse in the end. <laughs> now this of course doesn't mean that every fingering is going to work for me, just is, is, is working for you, but the structure of the fingering should be the same. Now I've already made a video where I'm breaking down all the different features of each finger, the good and the bad sides, so I'm not going to go into depth in this video in here, but if you're interested in learning more about this, check the video out here. <laughs> now for this first cadenza here in this Liebestraum, it is super important that you have a good fingering, not just for this cadenza, but for every technically challenging part <laughs> because without that your whole foundation is shaking so you will actually never be able to master this part and this is not what we want right right so take care of your fingerings in this case and in many many other pieces you can normally break down the music in little figures and the trick is basically to use the same fingerings or very similar fingerings for same movements now before i try to explain to you in detail which fingering i'm using personally here in this Hard. I think probably nobody's going to understand my explanation and it's probably much easier if I just show you what I'm doing here. <laughs> Please note, this fingering is working for me personally, but I know that it's not going to work for everyone. Plus, it's not going to work immediately, so that's not the magic trick here. <laughs> the magic happens while practicing. <laughs> okay, whoa, 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 not so fast. I know exactly what you're doing when you are practicing. <laughs> and I know you don't want to play this part over and over and over and over again for 40 hours straight without seeing any visible improvements. <laughs> because guys, this is not real practicing. It's time to integrate some real methods into your practicing routine. And yes, I'm saying routine because you won't be able to master this part forever if you just practice it once on one day. No, this is something that you have to keep on practicing every single day. Here are a few rules and methods that I keep in my head when I'm practicing parts like this. The first step and the first rule is to pick small parts. Don't practice like the full cadenza at once. Just take small parts out of it and practice these parts on their own. The second step is to use rhythms and groups. By doing this, you're going to help yourself to speed up later and to get used to specific movements. The third step is the step that we all hate, which is using the metronome. And please, when you're speeding up, don't go too much over your limits. You should always try to push yourself a little bit above your limits, but don't, you know, if you see that you're not able to hit one right note, then you already know it's, it's you know, it's way too fast. <laughs> And the fourth step is to play things in context. So try to start a few bars before the part that you just practiced. So you're practicing the connection between the parts. Now, the next step is 
repeat. <laughs> I know this is the most annoying part of the whole journey, but I already outed myself. I'm not a wizard, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the magic trick lays in repetition. As I said before, try to get yourself a routine, a practicing routine, where you're practicing the same things again and again and again and again over quite a long time. <laughs> I promise if you practice like this, after one week the first movements are getting more and more stable and after practicing like this for let's say a month, you will be able to play this full cadenza fluently without having to stop or slow down in the middle and after a few more months you will be able to you know play it in full speed all right guys this was enough youtube for today now go and practice <laughs> but before you go if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and to everyone a little reminder for my upcoming concert in leipzig in gewandhaus with all chopin two tickets and more information in the link in the description box see you there and see you in the next videos bye now go practice. Practice now. 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 I said now. <laughs>